We're going to start out our debugging exercises by looking at something simple like a hello world first in a command line debugger like uh, Radare and eventually moving on to some of the more graphical tools like Cutter or Ida or um, some of the others. So to start out uh, in this directory uh, I've got some unknown sample up here and hello.out right here. So for example we can run file on hello.out we see that it's a standard 64-bit uh, Linux executable, not stripped, dynamically linked, so that's all useful. And we're going to see with the next example why maybe you don't always want to start up right in something like GDB, which is just a traditional debugger for doing development. Uh, like out of the box, it's not super well suited to malware analysis or reverse engineering. There are good plugins for GDB that make it um, better for those purposes, along with you know plugins for exploit dev and something like that. But we're just going to start out in something like um, Radar 2 or Radar or R2 or whatever you want to call it. Um, because, you know, out of the box, it doesn't need much customization. Don't need to really install anything to be able to do what we want to do. So I'm going to say uh, Radar 2 dash D to enter into debug mode off the bat. And we're just going to start out by looking at the Hello World program. Right. So uh, we are now in the program. Um, we're sort of sitting at this uh, memory address. It's likely the program's entry point or something like that. Uh, we can check by uh, printing the deep, uh, disassembly for this function. Uh, nope, no function there. So we're just sitting somewhere in memory. Um, we can run the standard batch of analysis on this assembly. So just the more A's you add in Radari, the more analysis it's going to do. So I'm just going to do the standard, which is three A's. It's going to look for functions, things like that, inside of this um, executable. Uh, I can run. AFL to see what kinds of functions it found. So there's some built-in system functions that I found. Uh, there's like the main entry point of the program. Here's main, here's a call to exit. Um, here's a function called print msg, which I don't think is a standard library function. Um, another hint is that it doesn't have this IMP in front of it. Um, and there's put string as well. So uh, let's just hop over to main and take a look at the structure of the program. So we can say seek, and then we can either put in a memory address or we can put in the you know a flag or a symbol name or function name that we want to jump to. So I can say seek to main. You'll see the memory address here has updated to uh, where uh, that function starts. Now, rather than working in sort of this command line style mode, there are some really good visual modes inside Radar. So I hit uh, capital V. That's going to bring me into the main visual visual mode. Now the first version though that you see is going to be something like a disassembly dump or a hex dump, which you really don't want. Uh, if you hit lowercase p though, it'll cycle through some of the various uh, visual modes. So there's this one that shows instructions, which is not bad uh, just for like looking at code. However, if you hit p one more time, you actually get a window that's really nice for debugging. I'm just going to change my colors because I like these ones better. Um, so up at the top here, you know, this is probably uh, some stack content. Uh, here's some register values, like what the regs are sitting at right now. Uh, and then here's the beginning of the main function. All right, so there's your function prolog, a call to put string, a uh, call to print message, and a call to exit. Uh, we can even see some of the stuff that it managed to dig up for us. For example, it grabbed this symbol called stir.inmain, loaded that into di, and then called put string. So uh, on the right hand side we see this was probably referenced from somewhere in the data segment or the read-only data segment just a piece of string so this is likely the address this memory address of this string getting loaded into the destination uh, index register and then we probably print that uh, then we call some local function called print message and then we call exit um, from here, we can actually jump into the graph view as well if you want to look at the graph structure of the program. If you type capital V again, you'll be taken to the graph now because there's no there's no loops, there's no conditions in this program. We're not really going to see anything in here. But again, um, this would be the graph view. Uh, you can hit Q to get out of the graph view mode. So as far as actually debugging, um, what you can do, um, you can use the some of the function keys like F2, F7, F8, and F9 for various features. So F2, for example, will set a breakpoint wherever my cursor is currently positioned. 
my cursor is always going to be at the line that's sort of right below these registers here. So the line that kind of goes away as I scroll. Um, you can scroll using the arrow keys. You can scroll if you're used to stuff like Vim, um, H, J, K, and L to move around. All right, so if I move down a little bit, you notice that first instruction, the, um, the prolog, the push EBP is gone. So if I go back up one, we're sitting here, which is the start of this function. If I hit F2, you're going to see that we add a breakpoint. So now I have a breakpoint at the first line of main. You see it popped up that little uh, lowercase b there for me. I can hit F2 again to remove it. All right, so I can just go and add a bunch of breakpoints on some lines and take them away. Right. So we'll set a breakpoint at the first line of main. Um, it's going to print a string for us. Maybe we'll set a breakpoint right before we call this function so we can like step to it and stuff like that. Okay, okay so I've set these two breakpoints. Now, the, it's ready to sort of begin execution. In fact, we can kind of say um, F9, which will run us to up until the first breakpoint, which is the first line in main. Remember, in stuff like an elf, there's a bunch of sort of setup things, um, setup functions that get executed before this um, to prep our actual program for execution. So if I hit F9, it's going to run to the first line in main. You can see that um, this instruction, so this, this is the address out of the text segment where this code lives. Uh, we've halted here, right? So it's kind of showing what instruction we're at right now. You know, um, your instruction pointer is pointing to 158, 158 right there. Right. So we can start to step through this function just by hitting F7 to step um, as a single step. So I'm going to step up to here. Um, we can also check the contents of this string if we wanted to. Uh, we can type a semicolon to bring up a prompt where we can start entering any radar command. And I can do stuff like um, do a formatted print for me. Uh, and then we can give it like a variable. So print this thing for me. Uh, I did not give it a format. Um, so print a lowercase z is radar's format for a null terminated string. So it says go to this symbol wherever this is pointing to. So usually a memory address. It's saying, hey, print that as whatever you find there as a lowercase uh, or a null terminated string. So it actually printed that for us. Uh, we can confirm, you know, you can type IZ um, to dump the read only data segment from the program. Here we see the string in main lived at that address. That's what was there. Um, that's what was being fetched by this load effective address instruction, right? So that's kind of how we uh, look up content and view content. Um, so as far as the actual program execution goes, we're sitting right here about to call puts rather than step into the puts function because why would we debug a standard library function? By the way, hitting enter gets rid of that prompt for you. Um, if I type F8, it will step over that call. Okay. Uh, now it should have printed uh, that string uh, out to standard out somewhere. Uh, I don't see it on my screen, but it's probably printed somewhere. Okay, um, so we stepped over that function that printed that string. Now we are uh, right before a call to print message. Now this is more likely a local function. So if I do single step, single step, it's gonna bring us into that function. So now we're inside print message. Uh, it's a small little function, right? It's got a little function prologue. It grabs this string, hello world. And again, just calls uh, put string, and then it completes. So we, you know, pop the old base pointer and return. Uh, we can confirm that step, 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 step over, step, step, step. Now you can see down here, um, it usually throws in this little comment wherever the uh, instruction pointer is pointing. So now we're back in main, uh, sort of right after that call to print message. And I can step and step over. And then now the program's essentially finished if I hit F9, because now we're sort of in the wrap up stuff um, after our per function returns. If I hit F9, eventually it's just gonna run until there's nothing and our program terminated and that was the sort of execution. We can confirm our suspected behavior of that program. Uh, we can run it, hello.out, right? It printed those things. 